Americans who accept Jesus as their Savior do so before reaching the age of 13. And then it says two out of three make that commitment before their 18th birthday. Does that surprise you? Usually that is probably one of the most fertile times uh, in someone's life to reach them with the gospel. And so this is why it's important for us to understand how to share the gospel. And it's important for a a church to know uh, how to reach children. Let's talk about a few common objections here that people have to sharing the gospel with their children. There is a concern that some people have about a false conversion. When I say a false conversion, it's one of those situations where, you know, a child, uh, you're, you share the gospel with them, and they pray that sinner's prayer, and they get baptized, but they really, really didn't understand what they were doing. Okay, my wife has a similar testimony to mine. She'll tell you that she got baptized uh, because her brothers could do it, and it wasn't until later when she went to uh, youth camp that she finally gave her life to Christ. So there is that concern. And let me just say that's a very valid concern, to be concerned over whether your child is making a genuine commitment or not. Hopefully what I share with you tonight is going to help you get more confidence in that area. But it is very valid because, honestly, I think we have a lot of people who have come through our churches and they've prayed a prayer, but they really haven't committed their life to Jesus. And so Jason Allen, who is... uh, president of Midwestern Baptist Theological Seminary said this, and I thought this was pretty profound. Remember, children do not have to become like adults to be saved. Adults have to become like children. Right? Jesus said that. Unless you become like a little child, you know, you you can't make the kingdom. Think about this thing. Lead by example. This is probably the most important thing that I'm going to share with you today. Because if you want to see your child come to Christ, they have to see you living out the gospel. Your relationship with Christ is vital to leading your child to Christ. And so they've got to see you walking out your faith. And scripture is very plain on that. Deuteronomy 11, 18 and 19. You shall therefore lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul. And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. Listen, you shall teach them to your children, talking of them when you are sitting in your house, and when you are walking by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. So, first of all, the last part of that verse, what does that describe? Pretty much your day-to-day life, right? I mean, you know, when you wake up in the morning, when you... Uh, have meals together as you're out doing your activities, those are perfect opportunities to sow into your child's life, the gospel. And But back up to that other verse. He says, You shall therefore lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul. And so that's important for you to have your relationship with Christ before you can lead your child to Christ. <clears throat> Scripture teaches that parents are the primary disciplers of your children. Not the church, although the church should have a part of it. Not the pastor, although Pastor Ed should have a part of it. Not your Sunday school teacher, although your Sunday school teacher should have a part of it. God lays the primary responsibility for discipleship and evangelism on us as parents. And so... That's a pretty heavy responsibility. And as I said earlier, our own relationship with Christ is critical to being able to do this, to be able to disciple others, because you have to be discipled too.